Hi everyone, how you doing? It's me, Mastery. And this is a, a, an interesting video. I have here with me this, this amazing... What is it? Well, when I was about six or seven, I wrote a short story. So today I'm gonna read it to you and show you how much I've improved since then because that's, that's what I'm gonna do. So, we have here, we have chapter one. I woke up the stairs, feeling sorry for myself, trying to think what went wrong. As soon as I got to the top of the flight of stairs, my younger brother Jeff said, Maybe you should work on your grades. Instead, you get a bowl of chips, lay on your bed, and play video games. I started to think. Then he continued, And you only have three friends, and you always get bad grades. And now I was getting annoyed. Every time I do something bad, he rubs it in my face. Shut up, Jeff, I said. Jeff froze. He knew I wasn't supposed to say that. So he ran downstairs yelling, Mommy, Mommy, Justin said a bad word. I ran to my room and locked the door. Just then, I heard a knock. It was Dad. Steve was at his brother John's funeral, thinking what went wrong, crying and sweating at the same time. All of a sudden, SWAT rushes in the room. Exhausted, he looks around the room. Then he saw me. Steve, he said, we need your help. Even though I was confused, I said yes, then we left. When we got outside, I saw a military tank that was as big as the street. We went inside, then drove off. I looked out the window. There was smoke. Looking at the small tube in his hands, he has a flashback. Steve was at his house doing what all boys love best, video games. But just then, there was a huge explosion. Steve hid under his bed. Five minutes later, Steve crawled over to the window. Looking outside, he saw smoke coming from the pizzeria. Steve was shocked. He ran down the stairs, went outside, then raced to the pizzeria. When he got there, he saw the spaceship, an alien spaceship. Curiously, he looks in the spaceship and finds a medicine tube. He looks inside and finds pills. Here we are, said Corporal Thomas. Make sure to come back alive. The sergeant chuckled. Don't worry about us. We'll be fine. There it is, said the corporal. Steve was at his brother John's funeral, thinking in his mind. He remembered playing baseball with his brother John. John was an honest brother. He liked everybody that he saw. He was a great influence for Steve. He was his best friend. He always remembered him. He always remembered him, saying, No matter what, I'll always be there for you. With tears in his eyes, he looked at the coffin, then looked back down with the picture in his hand. The picture was torn and had a few holes because it has been in the basement for so long. Mind you that I was about six, seven, or eight when I wrote that. Jumbled mess as it is. I'm, I'm kind of amazed, honestly. Now I'm gonna show you how much I've improved since then. Yeah, this is, this is okay. I'm gonna read you the, the prologue of my book that I've been working on for about two to three years now. I'm on chapter six. See, here's the deal. For me, with projects, it just happens, and then I forget about it, and I do something else. Like right now, I'm doing YouTube. Let's hope that doesn't fade out for a while. Today, he said in his microphone, we face a great danger. Something unexpected, but yet expected. His low and growly voice continued, the fear and rage of the population has grown to a maximum. Green eyes scanned the bloodstained boots that was equipped by himself. A civil war broke out. Paying attention to the stark screen, watching every little sound wave appear as words filled into the atmosphere. Ah, but this civil war is far from the same. It has defined us as a human race. Us, together. The man got up off his reclined chair and took a handheld microphone with him, stepping at a snail's momentum around the confined space. His boots made a squishing sound as he paced. Something came, something far more than any, any human being could imagine. A sign rested in the window. Words that were printed on it were, Please, do not interrupt while broadcasting is in progress. Thank you. Cold, 
dark, barely a light to be found outward, as if an intense form of fog was awaiting outside the establishment, preying on the lonely soul. A terror from the other side of the glass stared him dead in the face. He jumped back, knocking his back against the hardwood floor. The microphone was released from his tightly grasped hand. It tumbled away from him then ceased movement. Forehead sweating, he reached for the side of his belt, where his shirt concealed a weapon. A police standard pistol. Someone had finally found him. This was no longer a game to be played. It was more than that now. After all these toiling years for acceptance, then being rejected for not confronting to the norm of society. With courage and enough sensible reasoning to show the face that had stuck with him, that had aged over the years, decided to go slowly, almost crawling towards the window. He peeked out to see his mere reflection. The man laughed with a lot of sarcasm, exactly like a fake ha ha ha. His body bent downward, the hand clutched the microphone, then returned to his desk and rested once again. Continued recording the warning, speaking, The population decreased. But in some possible way, it has increased. Increased to something beyond all horrors, beyond all distinction. A race far more deadly. This deadliness will triumph over everything. Every living and dead, every plant and animal, every atom and molecule, until this planet is changed for the good. The good of electricity went out. Darkness swallowed the room. No, 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 this can't be happening. Not here, not now. Attempting to turn on the computer, his index finger jams on the start button. It doesn't respond. This can't be happening. It just can't. His fist pounded the table. I now know what I must do. The man got up from his comfy chair and grabbed his coat from the brown rack in the corner of the room, then took four steps to turn the handle. With the human instinct to touch the door handle and twist it, which would then open it, the door abruptly swung wide open without his order. Sudden shock appears on his face. Hey, and that's been another video by me. Why did I make this video? Here's the deal, I have these ideas for videos, so I just do it. And now I realize that maybe it's not the best thing. I'm just trying to record a video and there's a lot of noise. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, I, I apologize. See, here's the deal. When I, when I make videos, I have these ideas for videos. In fact, I have a list in my drawer of video ideas and I just do them just like I did this one. So I probably won't do another video like this for a long time. Anyways, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, please press the like button and subscribe. Please watch some of my other videos that are not as boring as this one. I promise you my other videos are way better depending on the video. So thank you. Subscribe for more content if you do subscribe. Please be sure to press that bell. You'll know whenever I post a video because that'd be cool, you know, I don't know. And also tune in next week for another video. Goodbye.